Hello. Over the past couple of weeks, I have received an incredible amount of correspondence. And thank you to everyone who has taken the time to write to me. Uh, if I have missed you, if you've emailed me and I haven't responded, I apologize. I'm trying to get to everyone. I am, a, it's been hard to organize so much correspondence and I've really, I've spent hours every day on it. It's, it's been a lot and I am really trying to get back to everybody, but I'm sure I'm probably, there have probably been a few that have slipped through the cracks. So I apologize if that is you, please feel free to send me another email. Uh, you're not going to bug me. Go ahead and, and send me another. And I'm still trying to work through the ones I've received. So there's still a good chance that I'll, I'll get to you. But um, it's just been a lot. <laughs> um, it's been overwhelmingly positive and encouraging. And as I've said a couple of times, one of my main fears when I when I did this was that I was going to be blowing up my my chances of finishing this school program. But but my concerns were going to be met by the population at large with a big so what it would just be like a video that maybe a handful of people saw and my school saw and I'd just be out on my ear whether I wanted to finish or not and uh and nobody would really be concerned about this because this mind virus this cultural revolution and thought had already spread so far and wide that nobody would would care about this this preservation of our values I, I knew that that wasn't true on, on some level because I know that among the people that I speak with, that's not the case. We, I, I feel like I, I end up around among like-minded people more often than not, but I guess that was my fear. And so receiving a lot of support in the comments and in my inbox has been like, it's just been very, very encouraging and, and validating. Um, I have had, I guess the, the criticisms that I've gotten have been mostly from either the social justice people who are calling me a racist and a transphobe or telling me that I've misunderstood and I'm, I'm the one who's oversimplifying these, these lessons. Um, and I kind of expected to get this sort of criticism. So that, that doesn't really, that rolls off um, <laughs> pretty easily. And, the, the other criticisms are like the other the other side, basically saying, "I'm not coming on. I'm not coming out strong enough, or I, I'm late." I've heard this phrase a couple times: "Late to the game," like I should have done this a long time ago. And you know, I I just want to say we're all at our own. We're all waking up to whatever we're waking up to all the time. You know, we're all having realizations constantly. It's growth is a process and we get there when we get there. And this is one of the reasons that I, I always try not to um, denigrate or, or shame someone. I mean, certainly not shame someone, but, you know, make someone feel small for, for where they are along a journey, you know, because we all get there in our own time and, you know, where were you five years ago? Maybe maybe you had your eyes open to things that I, I didn't, but maybe this year you've awakened to some things that, that you were still taking for granted five years ago. And, you know, I've only been actively pushing back against this stuff for like three years now and um, only publicly for like three weeks. <laughs> but that's because I'm not a public person. I'm, I'm a, I just live a small life in a, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, doing anything very publicly. So this is brand new for me. Uh, the people that I have really enjoyed hearing from, well, I've enjoyed hearing from everyone, but the ones that really stand out to me and I think are really relevant and pertinent to this conversation have been the, uh, the students, the, the students in graduate school in counseling programs specifically, but also in undergrad and in even, even K through 12, the teachers, the parents, the professors who are saying they're seeing the same things that I'm seeing and they're concerned about it as well. Um, also parents who have sent their kids to therapy and people who have been to therapy and had the social justice um, approach used on them by their therapists and, and feel how they feel about that. Getting some of that correspondence has really been, uh, it's, it's been really interesting and I want to share some of that with you. I've got some comments that I want to share with you today, but also I have spoken with a couple of fellow students from other programs who are, are willing to 
come forward and, and speak to me. Uh, we, we're gonna, I'm planning to do a couple of interviews or conversations via video conference that I can record and then upload so you can hear other people talking about this as well. Because I think this is really concerning. It's not just this program. I know I've been, um, I've been on the, the Antioch uh, criticism um, bandwagon or whatever, but I, it's, it's not Antioch specific. This is really going on across the profession. Uh, and, and even if it weren't, even if it were just Antioch, it's not like these students that come out of this program go on to have like a big A for Antioch or an SJ for social justice next to their license. Their license looks like everybody else's license. So these are counselors that are working in your, in your schools and in your um, clinics and, and just on your insurance <laughs> roles. So, you know, it affects everybody that, that these people are out there having been trained to use you, the client, as an opportunity to balance a social scale rather than just seeing you as a person who has needs, experiences, and, um, and a desire for personal improvement. So um, all of that said, I also have received um, a number of, of offers of support and uh, financial support. And that is so kind. And I, I'm so grateful. That is really, really, really thoughtful and nice. And I have a couple of links that I'll post in the uh, description here where if you would like to donate, you you can. And, and I give you my my great gratitude for that. I'm not gonna ask anybody to do that. You certainly don't have to, but um, this has taken a lot of my time and I am interested in this conversation and continuing to do this. If people are interested in continuing to, to, to be a part of this conversation with me. And um, I, you know, I did kind of commit academic and career suicide a little bit. So uh, having a way to still still connect around these things is is wonderful and um I, I don't know where it's going to go but it certainly is an interesting conversation i am very interested personally in conversations around how people make ethical decisions how people confront the challenge of groupthink and peer pressure and social conformity pressure and what makes some people able to withstand that, what makes others more likely to go along and get along. And I think that for each of us, it's probably different for every single presenting situation. I'm not sure that any of us are completely immune to that, but where we, where we are with those different, those different challenges that we, we confront, whether it's COVID restrictions, whether it's social justice or, or whatever form that that you're encountering it in, in your life. I'm very interested in that. And if you are someone who wants to donate as a thank you, I would like to invite you to submit a question if you have, uh, or a scenario that you're confronting in your life and you'd like to hear uh, a deeper discussion of, if you'd like for me to engage with that, I will choose one. And I, I have a friend in mind that I'd like to discuss it with and we'll, we'll record a video We'll do a deep dive and really, um, really uh, use take take a, our time to seriously consider the presenting issue and and give you our thoughts on it. I can't promise that we'll solve your problem or offer you the winning advice, but um, we will take it uh, a serious look at it and give it real consideration. And we'll record that and upload that video. And if this is something that people are interested in going forward then um, we can make it a periodic thing. And uh, I'm, I'm definitely interested in, in how people confront these issues and, and what it looks like for every, for every individual because every, every scenario and every individual is so different. So um, I am going to go ahead and share my screen because I wanna share some comments with you, some of your comments with you. So I'm assuming that if you posted a public comment that you're probably okay with having your username shown on screen, but just to be sure if, if the comment had, a, if the username looked like a full name, I went ahead and, and uh, redacted part of it for your privacy. But here's a viewer named Shosti or called Shosti. 
And Shasti says, I just found your YouTube channel a week or so ago. I'm a professor and I'm resisting the same ideology in my own discipline, primarily in my own classes. Race ethnicity is at the forefront of this movement and I believe is fundamentally racist. I think they meant it is. Ideas themselves are labeled with the skin color. It's perverse really. How can an idea be white or brown or whatever? Ideas are just ideas that need to be evaluated using, using logic. But logic we are told is also white and used to oppress. They literally make up their own epistemology and if you subject it to tr traditional analysis using deductive or empirical reasoning, they simply dismiss it as white European or worse yet promoting white supremacy. So they insulate their ideology, making their views impossible to argue against. Yeah, I absolutely agree. That is what my experience was. It was like, if you disagree with this, that's your, that's your white fragility, <laughs> you know? You're, it's, a, it's a Kafka trap. So thanks for your comment, Shasti. I'm sorry you're dealing with that at work. Angel says, I just finished an MA in clinical mental health counseling too and had to read some of the same pseudo intellectual garbage and was pressured by the same ideology, not nearly the same extent at the same extent as that school. I'm sorry, your school is basically a propaganda machine. Can you transfer your credits to a different program and finish? I don't know if I can, I don't know. I've got a lot of credits and I'd, I'd probably lose a lot in transfer, but thank you. Pima says, I hope this feels validating to you. I'm with you all the way. I just graduated and am still processing the experience and you sharing yours and recognizing what is being taught does not serve the client is how I feel. I feel like I wasted so much care, energy and hard work to obtain my graduate degree. I too was treated poorly by the institution. I'm not sure what I will do next but cannot ethically practice under these guidelines. Thank you for speaking out. It is about the clients, not us or our political beliefs. It pains me that people's vulnerable psyches are in the hands of those who practice this way. I completely agree with you, and I'm sorry that you're having to make that decision about practice. Thanks for sharing. Maze says, hello, and thank you for this video. It resonates with me deeply as a new therapist and counselor who had a mental breakdown through the program due to how entrenched the program I did was in social justice ideology. I'm so glad I'm not alone and that there are others who will not stand for the ridiculousness. Thank you, Maze. Gosh, a mental breakdown. That's, I'm sorry that you went through that. And that sounds like how I felt during my social justice class as well. So thank you for your comment. Lola says, my daughter is a practicing family therapist with a degree from Antioch. Everything you are saying is true. She was in a sea of craziness and not able to speak up for fear of reprisal. Thank you for speaking up. These crazy so-called professors are criminal. Yes, they are. Thank you for that. And I'm sorry for your daughter. Edward says, well said, I disaffiliated from Antioch, Seattle after five or so years of teaching as an adjunct and running a continuing ed program. I understand completely where you are coming from. I have known that Antioch, Seattle is on the cutting edge of wokeism but didn't know how far down they have gone. Although I also get the regular diatribes and editorials from the executives. Yeah, so you know what I'm talking about there. Sorry you have to go through this, but I admire you for putting up a fight. I hope things work out for you. Thank you, Edward. Jam says, I've struggled with and, hid and hidden a movement disorder that I developed at age four, having had hints of uncontrolled movements even younger according to my mother. I suppressed them so successfully that it went unnoticed as a potential disorder. I was and am embarrassed by them, so I sought to perfect my ability to suppress them. Something clicked in me after my father passed a few years ago, and I sought out a therapist to help me navigate it. My therapist was young, but I was confident in her, having seen evidence of her compassion and dedication. I, I felt comfortable after a few months, enough so to reveal that would make my political leanings easy to discern although that was not the topic. Something changed after that and all progress towards diagnosis that would explain my movements halted. I flailed pretty wildly during the rest of our sessions trying to get her to work with for me again. I didn't wanna just leave, I felt attached. I tried showing her videos of my movements, something I had never shown anyone in my life. She compared me to a notorious psychopath during one of our last sessions. I have since sought out psychological testing and have been diagnosed on the autism spectrum. My movements were stereotypes, stereotypes, typically accompanying the disorder. I still wish I had a therapist to talk to about it, but my experience has made me very hesitant to of, of ever approaching a therapist again. It's harrowing what you're going through. It is so important that you have shared it. It's comforting to know you're out there fighting. Thanks, Jam. It sounds like 
it sounds like your feeling was really that your rapport was damaged by you talking about your politics and and that is a real shame i'm sorry if that was the case that that um it seems like a, a real just a real pity that that happened to what was a good therapeutic relationship for you prior to that thank you for sharing your story lk says thank you for speaking out i've seen i've been a speech language pathologist for 20 plus years and quit my job due to all this insanity i moved to a rural area and will most likely do something else i can imagine the education of slps now they wanted me to lie about name changes, meetings reports. I had a first grader almost vomit during therapy after being taught about masturbation. Wow. I'm sorry you're going through this. It must be hard after all the work you put in. You will still need clinical hours after graduation to get your license, right? How are the new graduates going to work under supervision? I'm guessing some, if not all, if not most in the field haven't been radicalized to this point. Yeah, I, I'm guessing that too. I, I don't know how they will work under supervision. I imagine that probably in order to work with the program, uh, the program what needs to approve the therapist. And I, I would imagine the multicultural competency stuff is in the approval process. So I'm not sure about that, but I'm really sorry to hear about what you experienced. Sounds like you're talking about name changes like, like gender identity name changes, lying about that in reports. Yeah, I'm sorry that you had to make that choice. And then Piper says, this is very similar to Walden University. I had enough, I had had enough and transferred out. I am so grateful, even though it left me three semesters behind my original graduation and thousands of dollars more. Thank you for your courage. I suppose it's not enough to transfer out. Thank you again for sharing. Yeah, thanks, Piper. Coffee Conversations. I like that name. I love, I love my coffee. Thank you for your bravery to speak up. I applied and was accepted to a master's in counseling program, but decided to withdraw within the first month without prejudice after the interview process and reading the first assignments. I realized I would have to sell my soul to the devil and betray all that I have used in the past to objectively counsel people internationally using common sense principles as well as traditionally conservative moral views, right and wrong. I can honestly say it is much freer to express our opinions overseas than it is in the United States. And it, its re-education programs, which are very similar to communist re-education programs. I pray you can complete your personal goals for counseling and caring for others mentally and emotionally outside of this toxic program. Yeah, thank you very much. Blessings, Brother Phil. Thank you, Phil. Um, this, that, yeah, so you saw it and when you started that program and you just thought, I can't do this. So yeah, good, good on you seeing the red flags. Cassandra says, thank you so much for making this video and sharing your story. I left my psychology program for math at my university because ethically it cannot be part of this new mental health agenda in addition to my constitutional rights being violated. Instructors in administration no longer act as educational instructors and advocates. They are acting as political activists who replace my education with bigoted and politically driven materials. Grading is tied to level at which you agree or disagree with the agenda, and I have the evidence to prove it. Like you, I have filed complaints with the university I attend. No matter what office I speak to, administration does not care. They respond as if I'm the crazy one when they're the ones in clear violation of the constitution and law. Yeah, it's very interesting. There's, she writes more there, but I'll stop with that. So she's another student who's definitely experienced something very similar and is really frustrated with it and has really tried to push back within the program. So thank you for that, Cassandra. Robert says, yep, I got kicked out of a counseling program for disagreeing with social justice activism being a required element of the practice. It's not just some university, it's mandated from the ACA top down. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's definitely um, part of the ACA uh, part of the APA, it's part of the KCREP requirements. They've all got this multicultural um, competency stuff, which is this, this social justice take on human interaction and identity. Sabia says, I had a similar experience as a college student going to therapy as a Muslim. I wasn't, it wasn't comforting at all when some therapist centered questions around culture and religion. I ended up being put in a position to defend my background saying that I'm not being oppressed. Interesting, so this sounds like you were in sessions with, uh, with on, on campus 
counselors or, or, or therapists. That's what I'm understanding here. And so they were trying this race, race broaching this cultural, cultural conversation with you and you were feeling like it was, um, it was putting you on the spot in a really strange way. That's, that, that really sounds like what I would imagine would happen if you try to have a conversation with somebody about that unsolicited and, uh, and in the way that we're being trained to do that. So thank you for sharing that that was your experience. Boom Boom says, this has been the case at Lewis and Clark Graduate School of Education and Counseling in Portland, Oregon for some time. They are in the business of education and what you get instead of an education is indoctrination shoved down your throat. Simply put, critical thinking is actively discouraged. Students who don't get on board are socially shamed by faculty, not all faculty, but those with the most power. Strangely, laughably, this includes two faculty members who count themselves amongst the oppressed while holding top positions at the college. The pathetic, disgusting part of the whole sham is how many students bought into it, no questions asked. It's not confusing why some elementary school teachers show up as some of the most woke, and then I guess I cut him off there, but thank you, or her off. Thank you very much, Boom Boom, for that comment. All right. Uh, 0114 Davis says, thank you for making this video. I am currently working on a master's in marriage and family therapy. My program is not quite as extreme, but the mental health counseling program seems to be. There are few, a few more conservative students in my program. We do not feel that we can express beliefs that go against the ideology for fear of retaliation from professors. I've been keeping my head down and expressing some of my thoughts when I can and freely with, in class and freely with like-minded students. We have not been asked to sign a pledge, so I will continue with my degree so that there is at least one therapist who is safe for conservative clients. I'm sorry they are holding you hostage for not bending the knee to their ideology. I hope more people come forward and we can reclaim this field for neutral practitioners. Thank you, Davis. That is, uh, yeah, that sounds, I'm, I'm glad you have a couple of other students that you've been able to connect with, that, that there, it's not just you and your program feeling like this. But I'm sorry that you're feeling like you can't express your beliefs. And I think that's a huge problem. So I appreciate you sharing your experience. Happy Holly Healthy Life says, I believe you. I was in a graduate counseling program at a state university and I only stayed one semester because it was so liberal and one-sided. Thank you, Holly, for that comment. Aquamom says, I resigned from teaching after 21 years to go into social work. I started an MSW, Masters in Social Work program, and was read I, that must be red pilled in my racism class. I dropped it after I dropped it all after that class and refused to pay the debt. We'll sit on my credit report until it falls off. I won't pay for that shit. Nope. Edit pilled. Okay, pilled. Yeah. So she she took this this program and I'm not sure what happened. I would like to ask what was it that this red pill in racism class? What what is that? It sounds like there's a lot going on there. But um, it was uh, something that made her upset enough that she pulled out and won't even pay for that. So yeah, thanks for your comment. Russian bot, that's a cute name, says, my sister graduated from this school. <clears throat> you're brave and thank you for speaking publicly on this. It's definitely an extreme group of people you're dealing with. The speeches at graduation were politically charged, <coughs> excuse me, to the point of being spooky. And yes, most of the people I've met who associate with the school, quite a few, including faculty, do seem to see Trump voters and really any average person in the middle of America slash the South as something like subhuman. Yeah, that's a good point. That's what it, I mean. When they say Trump supporters, what is that that they're even talking about? But they do talk about this, this group, this, this category of people as if they are less than human. So thank you for your comment there. Lizzie Reacts says, the same thing happened to me at the University of Wisconsin's graduate teaching program. I left, it was very scary at the time, but my life is so much better now. Stay strong, you have other options. Max says, thank you for this. I wish I had acted with such courage. I have a, had a very similar experience at Pacifica Graduate Institute, and it sounds like things are just getting worse. I encourage you to finish your degree and get licensed. It will, be, it will get better for you. There is a great demand for grown-up men and women who have actually committed to the craft of psychotherapy rather than the charlatanism that you describe. All right, so there's a handful. Thank you, Max, for that comment. Thank you all for those comments. And, and there were more. I just had to kind of just pick a handful. So um, again, if you are a student 
a teacher, uh, a counselor, or a, a client who's been impacted by this in therapy, and you're interested in talking with me, we can do, I think I already said this, but we can protect your identity to the extent that you would like to. We can do a black screen for you, a pseudonym. Um, we can just use your first name, however you'd like to do it. I'm interested in having a chat with you that we can record where you can have a say and, and talk about how this has this experience has unfolded in your life. And uh, so I encourage you to please get in touch with me. You can contact me through my website. I'll put the link in the description and, um, and let me know because I, I would love to hear more about how this is playing out for other people. And I'd like to share more of that with, with, with everyone who's interested because I, am, I think this is, uh, this, is, this is a very large pervasive problem. It's not just one university. And it's, it's not just a little, you know, something that I'm talking about. I think that there are a lot of people really concerned about this. So please join me in the conversation if, if you're interested in that. And thank you all for taking the time to watch and comment and offer support. And um, that's all. Thanks.